Hello, CH is true here. It's back to math for a little bit. Um, I don't know that I'm going to completely exclude all the other videos. I, I might still keep them up there. I don't know. Um, but definitely enjoy them now uh, because I'm going to try to return to my original reason for being here. Now, um, I can tell you guys this much, and that is I'm definitely rusty. I'm very, very rusty. I have not done math videos in a long time. So cut me some slack on this one. It's free comments below. Um, that means I need your, your honest opinion as to how well I did so I can improve. Remember the papers waving around? Okay, the old days. Okay, well, they're back. So, uh, by the way, I have a woo-woo board that I'm hopefully going to be able to use uh, soon. Hold me to that. We're going to discuss Marsen primes. In particular, we're going to prove that if a prime is a Marsen prime, that is a prime of the form 2 to the power of n minus 1, that that n must be prime. So if a prime is one less than an exponent of two, then that exponent must be prime. Okay, so what I mean here, and this is not well written, but what I mean is if n is p, uh, pardon me, if, if your final number is a Marsen prime, okay, so if 2n minus, to the power of n minus one is p, then your n must be p. That's really what I should have written. Uh, would have been better written than this. But now that I've explained it, what I mean is if your your number if your number is a Marsen prime, then your exponent is a prime. And that is contrapositive to, or the contraposition to, if your exponent is composite, then your final product must be composite. Because remember, if you can say that your final product is not composite, if this is true, and if you can prove this, then if your final product is not composite, then your exponent must not be composite. And we've proven that in that case, the Marsen primes, um, two to the power of n minus one being a Marsen prime, that that n must be a prime. So uh, if you can prove the contraposition, you can prove the original premise. So let's prove the contraposition and we'll prove the original premise. And again, um, this is, I'm doing this after a long time, so you, you guys need to bear with me and, and um, definitely cut me some slack so I can improve better, have constructive comments below uh, so I can improve, uh, and I definitely need to. I can know that I'm rusty at these after going to other subjects for a while now. Epsilon is equal to AB. What, do I, what is my epsilon? My epsilon is going to be my n. I'm going to change n, 2 to the power of n minus 1, to 2 to the power of epsilon minus 1. Why? Uh, because it's, it, it's a mathy thing to do, I guess. But anyways, my epsilon is equal to A times B. And for any natural number, you can split it into two different factors. For primes, it must be itself in 1. For composites, it would be itself in one, but it would also be uh, two factors that are both not one. So they can be equal to one another, or one can be greater than another. Um, that's if b is equal to a, you would get epsilon. If they're not equal, then by definition, then one must be greater than the other. So I'm just going to set it up such that my b is either equal to a or greater than a. Now. Substituting epsilon for a times b, I have 2 to the exponent ab all together minus 1 divided by 2 to the power of a minus 1, and I get a series, and this series is important. 2 to the exponent a times b minus 1 plus 2 to the exponent a times b minus 2 plus 2 to the exponent of a times b minus 3 all the way to 2 to the power of a plus 1. And you can work that out for yourself, and you can show that. And this will work provided that a is a factor of epsilon. So provided that your a is a factor of epsilon, this will work. Um, we'll simplify it and say 2 to the power of epsilon minus 1 divided by 2 to the power of a minus 1 is equal to 2 to the power of epsilon minus a plus 2 to the power of epsilon minus 2a plus 2 to the power of epsilon minus 3a all the way out to 2 to the a plus 1. Uh, rearrange 2 to the power of a minus 1 times 2 to the power of epsilon minus a plus 2 to the power of epsilon minus 2a going all the way to 2 to the power of a plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power of epsilon minus 1. Okay, now, um, something you notice. For any epsilon greater than 1, this must be greater than 1 here, right? So 2 to the power of 1 minus 1 is 1. 
So if that's the case, then my um, A is also 1. And, and so that you would then have, um, well, that's a special case. Let's, let's leave epsilon being 1 aside now. Uh, for any epsilon greater than 1, um, this would have to be greater than 1 here because it would be either 1 plus 2 or it'd be 1 plus some series, but this would be greater than 1. So I now have a situation where this, in all realistic cases that we're going to be assessing, that this is going to be greater than 1. So then the question of my 2 to the power of epsilon minus 1, whether that's prime or composite, is going to hinge on whether 2 to the power of a minus 1 is 1 or some number greater than 1. If it's some number greater than 1, by definition, then 2 to the power of epsilon minus 1 must be uh, composite. So, let us consider the case that epsilon is composite. If epsilon is composite, then there must be an A such that A is greater than 1, and then A times B uh, will get you epsilon. Okay, so if epsilon is uh, 16, then your A could be 2, and your, your, your B could be, could be 8. Okay, or they could both be 4 whatever the case may be, but you know that your A must, there exists an A such that A is greater than 1. Okay, well if so, then 2 to the power of A minus 1 is also greater than 1. So for all A uh, greater than 1, this must be greater than 1. For an A of 2, this would be 3. For uh, an A of 3, this would be 7. For an A of 4, this would be 15. You get my point, all right? This, this and this would both have to be greater than 1. Well, voila, if epsilon is composite, then this factor of epsilon's, this factor of 2 to the epsilon minus 1 would be, would be greater than 1, and that would be greater than 1, so 2 to the power of epsilon minus 1 but would have two factors that are both non-1, hence it is composite. So if epsilon is composite, then 2 to the power of epsilon minus 1 must be composite. Um, well, that's really affirming the contraposition right there. So you can just substitute your epsilon for C. Well, if that exponent is composite, then your final product is composite. If your final product is not composite, then your epsilon is not, then, pardon me, then your exponent is not composite. I know it's, it's not well written. I understand that, but that's why I'm explaining it. Uh, we'll do it better next time, guys. We'll do it better next time. So not... Um, 2 to the power of n minus 1 is, is not composite, therefore n is not composite, and that affirms our original premise. So, um, I called them Marsen primes. I'm not a native French speaker. I'm not a suave and sophisticated French speaker. Uh, I'm not a suave and sophisticated mathematician. Um, and uh, I am what you, what you see here, but I am a suave and sophisticated YouTube philosopher. And on that note, I wish you all a very philosophical and a very intellectually stimulating good day.